For example, a very warm welcome to Bhutan this week. My name is Santan Dolkar. Our top stories this week. His Holiness the 68th J. Kempo passed away. Accelerated Desung training program begins. And the government plans relief flights to bring back Bhutanese home. Now the news in detail. Coinciding with the 15th day of the second month of the Iron Mail Rat Year, His Holiness the 68th J. Kempo Tenzin Dindu passed away in Dodena Tempo. His Holiness J. Tizur was 96 years old. His Holiness was born in 1925 at Shah Padika in Nisho Gyok of Ondepodang. After completing basic monastic education at the then Punakha Tratsang, he studied at Tharpaling Monastery in Pumtang. His Holiness then pursued further studies in Tibet. His Holiness also served as the first Lebe of the Dubde at Tango and instituted numerous Dubdes in the country. He became the 68th J. Kempo of Bhutan in 1986 and retired in 1990. His Holiness is a recipient of the nation's highest honor, Ngada Pelgi Kolo, or the Order of Drugyalpo. His Holiness brought about major reforms in the central monastic body, strengthening and consolidating the institution, and instituted the first Buddhist Shedra at Tango and Cheri in Tempo. At present, His Holiness is in Thudam, state of meditation, and disciples are requested to offer prayers from home. Srinzam, PBS News. His Royal Highness Gelsab Jigme Dojo Anchu graced the opening of the accelerated Desung training program in Dewatang Samduk Jonkar. The three-week program to train 2,500 volunteers simultaneously in seven different locations across Bhutan began on Monday. The training focuses on health and security to enable volunteers to support health workers if necessary in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. All volunteers and trainers were tested for COVID-19 before commencing the training to prevent the possibility of a community transfer. And if Bhutan steps into red zone, Health Ministry has already initiated three plans. That includes Human Resource Plan, Elderly Program and Mental Health Program. Currently, Bhutan is still in orange zone. The health minister highlighted that preparing human resources is important as we cannot get people from other countries if situation worsens. 41 doctors who were undergoing specialization abroad and 92 medical students are back in the country. The ministry even contacted retired medical staff. For now, there are only over 3,000 medical staff working in the country. Corona virus digu shu twendi gibe digu na be sami be te ngachara atara gi soi gi shabto dila. Ta pepe shu achin alu gi khap chapni alu kini gi dalen ro cancer gi mencho beni gi kidney gi mencho beni gi ani na tho mafuni gi tonle te ngachay gi retired doctor kum jumi gi doctor disu dina zu dina gi shum disu ten shimle te ngachara. Coronavirus kit on Lezunigi, the Anigi Chaji the Lerim de Sue, Nachegi car, a decisive shunilla. Mingum de Sue Kati, even a telephone number le Gutsugi, Kulu de Dake, the Kule Ru, now a len, car at a decisive shunilla. The minister also said elderly people and those with chronic diseases should be taken care. The Machara in Kenabochi, elderly program. Aniche Chidiwe, the Anigi Genku bomb. Chani toke ni dila. Zonka kechi gi ganga genge mi bum chi de chidula. Ani kara ngachegi da halam zonka chuni de ching achegi tai se shuni nim sum de chigi nangonalo. Oh, tinalo. Da de chiwe ngachara gengechi diabetes. Oh, de chiwe ngachara to ani red zona. The joachin. Tani Ganga Genge di diabetic patient Bajin digi mendi gagi kenna. Ani dusugi ngachegi lerim dusu digi use shunila. The third plan, which is the mental health program, is led by a retired doctor. Shinzam, BBS News. The 76 year old American tourist and his partner, the country's first two coronavirus patients, have recovered. The health minister said the three positive Bhutanese students are also stable with no complications till date. 
Minister Dechen Wangmo said the daughter of the American tourist relayed the news of her father's recovery. After undergoing symptomatic treatment in Bhutan for over a week, the patient was lifted to the United States of America in an air ambulance for further treatment on 13th March. Hotel <laughs> At the same time, the health ministry has stepped up its surveillance system. Individuals coming in from high-risk countries are tested as soon as they land at the Paro International Airport. 34 countries Mizujami. Lalu, I mean, some in Yankajengi, Gakabna Leula, and in Yankajengi, Gakabna Le Omidusu, Nachegi, Namduna Le Tem Chin, Analera Lendola, Sampa, Yankajengi, Gakabna Le Omidusu. Na Naituni Mila, Zu Jasi Sagona Ituni Mila, Tete, Palera Nagelenda Villa. Oh, Taringachegi last case the Anavilla. Pan Yankajengi Sagona Le Wonde, Sangachegi. She said there will be no exceptions with regard to quarantine system. Even patients coming from outside will now be quarantined at Gidakom Hospital in Tempo. As of today, Bhutan has five confirmed cases of COVID-19, including the two recovered. Over 3,500 individuals are under facility and home quarantine and 189 have been discharged after completing the quarantine period. This is Pasan Doji for BBS News. The government spends about 3.2 million item every day just on food for those in quarantine centers. And currently, there are thousands of individuals undergoing the extended three-week quarantine period in the country. <laughs> The media halam ya may be the tontary jo mebala. Oh, honey, the sanina jam chilla. Mosh, sanina jam chi. That dinner long a cheggy soy gi hon like a demchi do la shop to tess the so. Tess la ruru chigga cup nala for dollar jare nija sum jare chin re test jam to villa. Oh, the nature test law and it is so can eat see much of a sunny jam chillu. The turbum sum to so ni nim chillu. Anim re. With about 3,000 Bhutanese abroad wanting to return home amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the government is planning to send relief flights to bring them back. According to the foreign minister, the government is seeking approval from India. He said flight plans are being made to bring back Bhutanese from other countries. We also spoke to a Bhutanese in Australia. <laughs> The <laughs> Countries have been making decisions very quickly and therefore it is very difficult to make any uh, travel plans. However, we have been uh, in talks with all the governments, especially with India, to see whether we can send relief planes to go uh, and pick up our students uh, from seven cities. We have already made an evacuation plan. 
Uh, you know that the lockdown in India is till the 14th. We hope that we can send a few flights before 14th. After 14th, if India's lockdown opens, then I think all the Bhutanese who would like to return can return. Uh, however, if it continues to stay in lockdown, then we will continue to ask permission from the Indian government to allow uh, Bhutanese planes to fly. And the same plan is being made for the Middle East. The two airlines have already developed a flight uh, plan to go to uh, the Middle East to pick up the Bhutanese. The same, the two airlines have been asked to develop a flight plan to go to Australia. And I believe they have to have two stopovers. So we have to ask the permission from all of these countries. And uh, so we are, uh, another plan is also to send the plane to Maldives. Now. So the, not only the flight plan, but also we are calculating how much it would cost. Uh, so that the people are aware of how much it would cost. So when we ask permission, it is just not a blanket uh, permission that we seek. Most governments require the flight number and the date on which it is going. So accordingly, because of that, we, uh, we are working very closely with the airlines and also working with the governments outside through our mission offices uh, in these countries and seeking permission. As soon as we get permission from them, then we will send Sishunivina. As the global situation due to the COVID-19 pandemic gets more serious, Bhutanese living in Jaigong, who are now temporarily housed in the vacant schools and colleges in Finsling, say they have nothing to complain about. All their needs are looked into. Of over 5,000 people evacuated from Jaigong, over 1,000 have been living in schools and colleges in Finsling, which are currently empty due to school closure. The rest have been taken care of by their employers or have returned to their villages. About 60 families at the schools receive daily meals from the office of the Gebe Zimpe. We are always grateful to His Majesty. Officials from the office of the Gebe Zimpe met with each one of us here and asked about our problems. Now we do not have any problem. Words fail to express our gratitude. In fact, we feel helpless because we are not able to contribute anything to the country during such a time. We have always received Kidu from His Majesty the King, so this time as well we were provided with essentials including water and vegetables. We have not faced any kind of problem so far. When I lived in Jaigang, I did not have these many vegetables in stock at home. Here, officials visit us daily to ensure everything is fine. Upon royal command, 1,000 units of houses are under construction at Tursa for the evacuees, who will be then moved out of the school and college campuses. Along with over 1,300 Royal Bhutan Army troops, trainees from various technical training institutes and other relevant stakeholders are building the houses expected to be complete by the end of this month. Sonapenjo for BBS News, Finsling. Now, coronavirus has forced millions of people around the world to limit who and what they touch and stay indoors for time being to reduce the spread of the virus. But these restrictions may create additional obstacles to the already existing barriers for people living with disabilities, in particular the visually impaired. In this story, our reporter Sonam Pem meets with a visually impaired person and highlights how he is coping with the pandemic. Phakpa Doji, a physiotherapy technician at the National Referral Hospital in Thimpu, lost his vision at the age of 15. As someone who relies on touch and support from people to navigate the world, he says the potential threats to his existence may have multiplied now. The coronavirus might be waiting on the next doorknob or window seal. Physical distance, shoko bembe. Given the current situation, we are supposed to maintain physical distance. But for those visually impaired like me, it is difficult. We require support of others to walk. The risk is less if you are supported by our family members or people we know. Moreover, we have been asked to minimize touching. But for people like me, we have to touch things for navigation. Now, 
The 32-year-old shares in the midst of the pandemic, people living with some form of disability will be at a double disadvantage if they happen to catch the virus. People living with various other disabilities are quarantined or left in isolation. I feel it is going to be way more difficult. Generally, for people who are quarantined or isolated, require just one doctor, but for people living with disabilities, they would require a lot of health professionals, adding pressure to the existing lot. The government would also end up spending more money on people like us. Other people living with disabilities BBS talked to echo what Lakpa shares. While the government approved the national policy for persons with disabilities in August last year, Lakpa feels there is a need to include ways and measures to help people with disabilities cope with new diseases in the future. I feel there is a need to have something in place for people like us to overcome and cope with challenges and difficulties during a pandemic. There is a greater need to have discussions to come up with measures so that in future, when there is a disease outbreak, we are ready. An expert with the World Health Organization warns that unless governments and communities take action, discrimination against people with disabilities could increase during the COVID-19 pandemic. As of today, there are nearly 16,000 people living with some form of disability in the country. Sunam Pem for BBS News. The very isolation which has always been a problem for them has come to be a protection from COVID-19. We are talking about Jomo Tsangka Dungkuk in Samjup Jonker. With border gates closed since 23rd of March, people there are cut off from the rest of the country. Jomo Tsangka is almost empty. It looks like a scene straight out of a horror movie. Many of them are now staying home. The town is deserted. The border gates have been closed for nearly two weeks now. No one goes out or comes in. Passenger buses have been lying idle here since then. Tin <laughs> There is no internal road connecting Jomozanka to other parts of the country. The construction of Jomozanka Samrang Highway began in 2016, but it is still not complete. Department of Roads said 47 kilometers has been already cleared and remaining 11 kilometers will be cleared by Dentak soon. Meanwhile, Food Corporation of Bhutan has already stocked food items in Jomozangka just in case. For Kilawang Chukin Sandru Jonkar, Kildedem, PBS News. The Priority Sector Lending Scheme launched in 2017 is helping many people involved in the cottage and small industries sector through better access to finance. And 25-year-old Sonam Gelsen from Mongar is one of the beneficiaries who always dreamt of becoming an entrepreneur. He started the oyster mushroom business and never looked back. Sonam Gelsen married after class 12. Though he qualified for higher studies, he had other plans. He started oyster mushroom cultivation in 2017 on a small scale in the village. However, through PSL scheme, he got a loan of some 200,000 Newton from Bank of Bhutan in 2018, and his business grew. Today he grows oyster mushroom on a commercial scale. The 
Nashin de Sukara, Chica Kablu, Juniki, two or Mam Kesuchi do Shudola. The shooting at Nosam Chitabu, the Tajutanjulu, the Nachigan, the Susi Dict of the Sukara Mole, the Jarashuneting Ovil, and the Buddha Lumacher, Dukaham, the Lupejuki Convici, the Toponime, Nodigi, the Nacha, the Nashin, Reading in the Chinacha, Ikalu, the Dube, Dizungi Lachi, Bioch, and Tanime, Nosam Tandi Gibe, the Shamuzin Jundi, the Lalin Tato in Shudola. He said since many Bhutanese are becoming vegetarian these days, marketing will not be a problem in the future. He is also attending training in Wenkar, sharpening his entrepreneurial skills. But it is not without challenges. Dinale the Rug Narasham Zinjo because Lukangil did the Takam Tomniki Kangil, Lashra Dula challenges fest and in the Bumis Shudola. Ching at a spawn last Chamugi, Sen Tomniki Lakadula. The Najani the Labi Mimasuchibe, the Lepad Shamusin Zomigi, technical person as in Yusuchi Bebe, the Lunga to me, Labi Mimasube and Vedro Kongi, the Chigi Timan Be, Chigi Timan Bevedalu, the Kongi Nachigano, Kongi Sable Be Masube, Anichi, the Nachi Lukangi and Chi Timesi Shudola. His father-in-law and wife give a helping hand. I help him with the cultivation. If you can work hard with dedication, anything can give you good return. Even if you have a loan, I think there won't be any problem to pay off the loan. This year so far, Sonam sold almost 200 kilograms of mushroom and earned 60,000 yutum. He is expecting to earn some more in the second harvest this month. For Sonam Sring in Mongar, Sring Zam, BBS News. Well, this is all we have for this week. See you next time. Until then, this is Samtin Dolkar saying goodbye.